When organisms grow, their cells undergo a remarkably complex cycle of division. Tim Hunt discovered the molecule that controls this process. Although his work has now received the highest accolades in science, Tim maintains that even the best research requires luck as well as lateral thinking. I think that's the only thing I'm good at, actually. I'm trying to sneak in by the back door. So you've relied on serendipity, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, the <laughs> ultimate lucky serendipitous scientist. Tim grew up in an academic family. I think I was a scientist from a pretty early age, but I didn't know what kind of scientist. I mean, I like fooling around with all those, you know, radio sets and, and, and stuff like that. My bedroom was a complete mess of soldering iron and wires and, you know, when my... So don't tidy the bedrooms. Don't that's tidy the, the bedrooms, person, that's a yes. good one. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Pelham studied for his PhD in Tim's lab at Cambridge University. I remember the professor of biochemistry asking me once, you know, where I was going to work as a graduate student. And when I told him I was going to work with Tim, and he said, oh, how very brave. It, it had a reputation for doing things that were more difficult than other people were doing. I remember one time, you know, we sort of, I was complaining some experiment hadn't worked, and he said, ah, oh, he said, Hugh, always remember, if at first you don't succeed, give up and try something else. And I took it to heart, because what it means is, don't just keep doing the same thing that's failing. Think of a way around your problem. Come at it from a different angle. Tim wanted to understand the way protein production inside a cell is controlled. When eggs are fertilised, they start making proteins. Sea urchins were often used as a model organism for studying fertilisation. So when the opportunity came in 1966 for Tim to work on sea urchins at the Woods Hole Marine Biological Lab in Massachusetts, he jumped at the chance. And it was there that he uncovered a surprising result. You had uh, discovered this very curious phenomenon. Yes, the, the protein that disappeared. The protein that disappeared, uh, and you were very excited about it. I was very, very excited <laughs> about it, yeah. Tim's chance discovery revolutionised our understanding of how the cell cycle works. Scientists already knew that something in a fertilised egg's cytoplasm can trigger division, but what was it? Tim's experiment revealed the pattern of protein synthesis in sea urchin eggs over time. He was astonished to see that one particular kind of protein seems to disappear, a process known as proteolysis, and then reappear at regular intervals. Cells, all cells, go through a, a series of events when they duplicate. They have to grow a bit, get larger, they have to synthesize DNA, they have to copy all their genes, all their chromosomes, and then they go through a process called mitosis where the chromosomes are separated out and the cell uh, pinches into two. And this series of events has to be driven by machinery that kind of keeps it ticking over. What Tim had seen on the gel was a group of proteins, now known as cyclins, that switch cell division on and off. These are proteins which are made, they control part of the cell cycle, and they have to be destroyed before the cell cycle can progress. And that was a, a, a totally unexpected means of regulating this process. Nobody had even thought that proteolysis might be important for cell cycle progression. I mean, it wasn't even a th no one had even written down as a sort of remote theoretical possibility. What on the list of interesting things? Degradation. We were yeah. all like transcription. And, yeah, but they're more positive, you know. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so that's interesting, actually. So there are a lot of theoretical possibilities that sort of get discounted by biologists, either because they're impossible or they don't think it's very likely. But that's no, that's not a very good argument, actually. It turns out. Two other biologists, Paul Nurse and Lee Hartwell, who went on to win the Nobel Prize along with Tim, had been working on the genetics of cell division in yeast. So when did the connection with the yeast genetics happen? Because one, huh. of, the, one of the striking things about this is the cyclins, for whatever reason, never came out of the genetic screens. No. But of course, genetics doesn't tell you that the protein disappears in us. No. <laughs> there's, the, there's the thing. Lee Hartwell and Paul Nurse had studied this process in yeast and they'd done genetics and they'd identified many genes that are required for this process. 
uh, in particular, there's one that's now called CDK, um, which uh, when, you, when it's inactive, the cell cycle simply stops. And that is uh, the engine of the cell cycle. It's a protein kinase. What it does is it goes around and modifies a whole series of proteins in the cell, which trigger all these complex events in the cell cycle. But it's a bit like, uh, I suppose, if you had a, a, a bus going on a, a, on a, a circular route, um, you know, if, if you kill the engine, the bus doesn't go anywhere. But what's missing from that is the driver that accelerates and steers, stops and starts the whole thing. So the control of this kinase is done by these proteins called cyclins, which activate the, the, the kinase and control its, it, its activity. Tim and his colleagues now believed that cyclins were universally important, but more proof was needed to convince the skeptics. The first paper had, had this wonderful referee's remark, you know, this is um, wild speculation based on faulty logic. And um, fortunately, the other reviewer was Paul Nurse, who said, this, is, this looks pretty interesting to me. I don't know, never did discover who the person was who yeah. thought it was faulty. Yeah. The, the thing that was really driving me was, I mean, it's all very well sea urchins and clams, but did vertebrates have these things. Over the next few years, as he pursued it and others pursued things, it gradually became clear that this was not a special thing in, in, in marine organisms. It was the real, the real thing. And that convergence of work in frogs, sea urchin, yeast, and eventually mammalian cells was a growing realization that this really was important and universal. And I think at the time, Few of us really believed that. It was still in the days when we weren't clear, there was no genome sequencing, it wasn't clear how related yeast was to animal cells, and it wasn't clear that the cell cycle was universal. But when it became clear, you know, all these things came together. And then suddenly all these bizarre, random, scattered observation fell into place, and you realize that if you had the right explanation, it naturally explained all these bizarre things that you couldn't understand. When suddenly it makes sense. And when it suddenly it makes sense, it's unbelievably <laughs> exciting. I mean, it's just, just yes. absolutely fantastic, yeah. you know, and it's so simple, and you want to tell the world about it. So, Tim, you, you saw right at the beginning that you discovered something terribly important. And the next few years, you know, it all fell into place. And yes. it was very central. And the cell cycle is an obviously important thing. Yes. So were you surprised when you got a call from Stockholm? I, I was extremely surprised. Yeah. This was a discovery that I had actually made with my own hands yes. and my own brain and my own eyes. And nobody else was involved. Other people had actually missed it. I mean, you know, anyone could have done that experiment in the preceding 10 years. So I suppose, you know, I mean, if I, but it's very hard to sort of step outside yourself mm -hmm. and. And, well, and, I, re and, I remember and that looking. well, and everybody was pleased because they felt this was, you know, a nice guy done it with his own hands, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> richly deserving yeah. it. The important thing I, I, I always think for, for young scientists, for graduate students and so forth, is, is to discover something. It doesn't have to yeah, be, yeah. It doesn't doesn't have to be big, super important. Or just, a, but just a little thing, but yeah. that pleasure of knowing that you know something that no one Nobody else in the world Absolutely. Knows. I couldn't it's, agree it's more. It's such a thrill. You, yeah. you just want to go back and do, and it, do it again. again. Yeah. Of course, it may take you a few years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why would you not want to solve a really important and interesting <laughs> problem, right? And, that, that's great, um, but you need an awful lot of luck to, to be in the right place at the right time. We should care, A, because we care about biology. Uh, we want to understand how living things work, but of course ultimately because we are living organisms and uh, we get cancer, and cancer is to do with uh, cells cycling, and you want to be able to stop that happening. Um, it, it underlies an enormous number of, uh, 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 well, the whole of development, uh, many, many, many processes. But I guess the reason that Tim works for the Cancer Research UK is that this is at the heart. Cell, control of cell division is what goes wrong in cancer. When you keep dividing when you shouldn't, that's a tumour. And um, if you understood how to stop that, that would be very helpful. I mean, I guess the other thing in all this, I mean, like with the polio, I wasn't really supposed to be working on polio. They only do it at night when the technicians weren't there. And so so I'm, I'm a bit subversive, I must admit. I kind of like working on things I'm not... I find it more fun to work on things I'm not supposed to work on than, than what, I, what I am. I remember 
in the early days, you would get a result at, you know, six o'clock in the evening. You'd think, gosh, if I just did that, you know, the next question, mm -hmm. and you, you, you think, well, it's going to take me <laughs> I start it now. <laughs> yeah, just about, well, <laughs> <What the> hell. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I've yeah. started now. It's too yeah. late. I have to stay, yeah. you know. Yeah.